Okay, so first of all, go into the comment section below and type in hashtag Q&A and ask me a question about tech or something personal. As long as it's not related to Fortnite, I will be answering it in a future video. So let's begin. So my dad has an old Dell laptop which he has had for like so long. I'm going to safely say it's about 10 years old. It's at least 8 years old, but I'm going to set up with 10 because it sounds better. So he has his old laptop and is right now running Windows 10. Now when you do a fresh installation of Windows on it, it works alright for a month or so and then it just becomes slow again and right now the boot takes about 5-6 minutes just to turn on and using it is so slow. It has a, like 500 gigabyte, really slow hard drive, a core, it doesn't even have a core laptop it has the Intel Pentium laptop with four gigabytes of RAM and it's a pretty old laptop it was good back in the day it's not the best right now so what I decided was to install Chrome OS onto it but then I realized hey you know if I do install Chrome OS I'm gonna be missing out on like Microsoft Office applications and stuff like that so I decided to go with a Linux system even yes I know that can get the Microsoft system as well but it's more of an actual OS than Chrome OS is Chrome OS is a little too online oriented okay so basically in this video we're just gonna get the USB ready to install Linux or whatever distro that I choose from Linux but I'm not gonna put every single part of this installation or this reviving into one video I want to break it down into different parts and make a series out of this so the first video or the first episode is this one where I'm gonna be creating the you know bootable or the installation USB yeah so let's get started okay so before anything even starts guys take a look at the social blade holy you guys are doing amazing we're getting like 50,000 views we got 126,000 here it's crazy thousand subs thousand subs and boom it's awesome guys so I just want to thank you guys so much for the support every single day on every single video it means a lot especially if you are watching this video I really actually do love you like this is awesome to me okay so let's start off what I'm gonna do is there are a lot of distros that you can actually get for Linux you know and one of them that I've actually used before is called Debian or Debian and I already experienced it on my Dell XP15 but it's a little bit on the heavier side and also when I did it I ended up uninstalling my or deleting my Windows boot manager which is again my fault but you know I want to try something new especially a more lighter version and I've read I've done some research and I heard the best one right now or the best distro right now is Linux Mint so we're gonna google that and see if you can get it so Linux Mint let's give it a try okay a lot of people seem to be using this I've, I've, I've heard about Ubuntu being the oldest one I've actually used Ubuntu back then like my old school had Ubuntu it was actually good, it's, I think it's the most stable one, but it's not like the newest one, so this is I think a little bit more better looking, I guess. It has a really nice dark look to it, which I personally love, if you guys didn't know. Uh, let's go to download, the, I don't like how the website looks by the way, it, it doesn't look that appealing. Okay, so yeah, I read about this, um, a, there's a different version, so Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE. So, uh, the Cinnamon version is an addition featuring the Cinnamon desktop. Uh, this is an addition featuring the main desktop and an addition featuring the XFCE desktop. So, I heard that the Simon is like the easier version or whatever if you don't know anything about it. So, I don't really know anything about it so I'm going to go with that and get a 64 bit because, well, that old laptop has 4 gigabytes of RAM which means 64 bit of an architecture would work. So, let's see, 1.8 gigabytes. Oh, there's two mirrors for me. University of Waterloo. And I, I think Waterloo is closer to me. So I'm going to go with that. And I'll just save it over here. And let's wait till it finishes downloading. Okay, so while that is downloading, we can prepare your USB. So you need a USB at least like 4 gigabytes, of course. I'm using a USB which has 32 gigabytes of storage. And funny fact, or like ironically, this right now has Windows 10. Uh, ISO on it so it's like a bootable Windows 10 drive so I'm gonna go ahead and while this is downloading there's a minute left I'm gonna go ahead and prepare it uh, for you know the burning of the ISO file so you're gonna have to go and get an application there are multiple applications that you can use to actually get um, your USB bootable ready I guess uh, one of them is called Rufus or Rufus. I really don't know how to pronounce it. I've used this previously. It has worked amazingly. 
um, so I don't see why I wouldn't use it for Linux. So I believe here's probably download it. There's a portable version too. Um, yeah. Okay. So there you go. Save that. Open it up. Boom. Yes. Do you want to allow? Uh, no. Don't check for updates right now. Okay, so right off the bat, it detected my USB, as you can see, a 32 gigabyte uh, USB, uh, boot selection, free DOS, non-bootable disk or ISO. I think I'm going to go with disk or ISO and select that. So there's 17 seconds left, so I'm not going to mess with it yet. Okay, so the ISO finished, so I'm just going to go and press select right there and locate that ISO file. And boom, everything says partition scheme. I don't know what that is. I'm not going to mess with it. There's no option there. A volume label. I'm not going to change that. I'm going to keep everything at default. Should we advance stuff? Uh, I'm not going to do anything here. I'm just going to press. The status says it's ready. So let's just press start. Um, yes, I believe I should press yes for that. And okay for this. Because I, so, I did some sort of research and that's what the... Um, I think article or thread that I read was talking about. And let's just wait for the ISO to get burned onto the USB. Okay, so I'm back and it's done. My I left and apparently my laptop turned off because the battery was way too low. <laughs> but anyways, the breakfast thing completed um, Just is done basically so I have it here and usually on Windows when you create a bootable drive You can easily just start up the installation from the file explorer, but it seems like it's not working So we're just gonna do a quick Boot from the BIOS into the installation of Linux and I'm just gonna go into that part and cut the video off from there and part two will continue the actual installation. So let's actually see if the USB finished getting the actual ISO as a bootable drive and yeah. Okay, so basically I'm gonna turn on the computer with my USB connected in and I can't remember, I think it's F12 to actually go into the BIOS. So I'm gonna, yeah, should work. There you go, we're in the BIOS and you know, I can choose to boot to whatever I want. Oh yeah, so I'm going to boot into my... There you go. I can start the installation for Cinnamon Mint. Alright, that is the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for making it all the way to the end. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to drop a like subscribe and also turn on post notifications if you want to be notified when I release future content. And with that being said, this is Tech Alpha signing on with today's video. See you guys in the next one. Peace.